Welcome to video number nine in the Prelude to Computer Science series. Uh, this is a video on building a model of a computer. I had previously said that this was going to be on designing a computer, but I've decided to take a little different track on this thing. And uh, so it's going to be building a model of a computer. And uh, we're going to start by trying to understand the components of a computer. The, the pieces that go into making a computer. The physical components that go into a computer are uh, very few conceptually. Um, the, the most important part of a computer is the central processing unit uh, or the CPU and that is what is usually described in metaphor as the brain of the computer. Uh, that's not a perfect metaphor, but um, it, 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 it is a very loose description of what it does. Um, there is also main memory, uh, and uh, usually in, in modern computers, a, a one or two gigabytes of memory. Uh, and there are input and output devices. Uh, an input device would be the keyboard, an output device would be like a printer or the screen or... Um, uh, you know, some other kind of device. You, a camera is also an input device, or a mouse is an input device. You also have auxiliary storage, such as disk drives, thumb drives, and tape drives. Uh, it's just a, a uh, another kind of memory, uh, basically long-term memory. Um, now, the, in, in fact, uh, there is another kind of memory in the computer that's called cache memory and that is actually uh, often on a, on a chip, like on a central processing unit. Uh, the things that you hang about the computer, the th there are other things that you can put on the computer, and those things are called peripherals. So a printer is both an output device and a peripheral. A thumb drive is, uh, an, is auxiliary storage, but it's also a peripheral. So here is a, a very uh, loose diagram of what uh, a computer looks like conceptually. There is a main board in, in many computers, a central board that contains most of the stuff uh, that, uh, that runs the computer. And that board is called the motherboard. And on it resides a CPU, or the central processing unit, and it's attached to memories. That blue line is meant to represent what's called a bus. Uh, the blue line that connects everything. And there's a, an external clock on the CPU. Now, I've drawn it externally here. Back when I studied computer science, the clock was still a separate part of um, the, uh, a separate component. It could be that on modern computers, the clock is built into the CPU. I, I doubt it, but um, uh, so I've just drawn it separately here. It, conceptually, it doesn't matter where you draw it. But it's important to understand that, that uh, the computer does need a clock, uh, and that's uh, that's separate than the clock that uh, is that keeps the time for you. That's a thing that sends out pulses at a regular rate to maintain the logic connections, uh, or excuse me, the, to maintain the, the sequence of the logic. Uh, and it's possible I will explain that in more detail later. I'm not I'm not sure if I want to go into that right uh, right now. Um, <clears throat> You notice that there's also, I'm showing keyboard here. Now the keyboard's not actually connected to the bus. I'm, uh, that's just a rough connection there. And the, the, um, the monitor isn't connected to the bus. The external storage uh, could be connected to the bus, though. Uh, and um, <clears throat> so that's, some, that's sort of the logical layout of what a computer looks like. Of course, it's usually put in a nice case and everything and, and made all professional looking. Uh, the computers of today look so clean and so uh, really nice and neat and neatly organized inside. It's very different than uh, some of the computers that I uh, initially uh, saw. There are a number of different kinds of peripherals on a computer that can be used on a computer. Uh, they tend to be optional kinds of devices, uh, although they might be required for certain kinds of tasks. They're generally not integrated into the computer. Uh, and that includes things like thumb drives, cameras, printers, scanners, 
uh, different kinds of measuring devices and control devices that you can hook up to the computer. Um, you you could look at it at a like a network card as uh, as a peripheral, although the uh, on on a lot of computers the network card is is actually integrated into the motherboard. On the left here we see a diagram of a motherboard and on the right there is a picture of a CPU. That's obviously not to scale. Uh, that CPU tends to be, well, I don't know, maybe maybe two inches on a side, something like that. I've never measure, measured one. But they're really big compared to the, com the processors that I, um, that I sort of grew up with and uh, that I'm most familiar with. Uh, they also, these newer CPUs produce a lot of heat. Uh, and many times, if you were to open up your CP, your uh, computer case and look for the CPU, you couldn't uh, you couldn't find it immediately unless you knew what you were looking for. And that's because there's this big, huge look thing on top of it. it. Looks like some kind of an alien ship, like a Death Star or something. And that thing is what's called a heat sink. And what it does is it's usually made out of something that conducts heat very well and it has the effect of kind of sucking the heat out of the uh, CPU or and has a lot of surface area that's why it looks all uh, space age and everything it has a lot of, uh, of uh, heat that it sucks from that CPU and then there's a big fan on there usually that blows right across that uh, that uh, uh, heat sink and gets the heat away from the CPU so that it doesn't overheat so the drawing in the middle there shows um, a, 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 what a chip looks like. And uh, notice those gold things, those yellow things coming out the bottom. Those are the pins of the chip. Uh, up top, it, there's a picture of uh, four memories that are located on a little mini card. Uh, and uh, on the bottom there is a, a picture of a sound card. I wanted to mention that all these pictures in this video uh, are uh, public domain pictures that I downloaded off a public domain site. Uh, I don't remember what that is, which site that was, but if I can remember it, I will try to put that in my side notes. Uh, information moves around inside the computer uh, via a set of wires that are called the bus. I don't know what, if bus stands for anything, um, but uh, basically it's a bunch of wires. Uh, for part of the uh, trip, the wires are actually uh, embedded as traces in the, in the motherboard or in other boards, but um, most of the bus is actually a physical wire that you can see. And if you ever take apart a, a regular um, uh, desktop computer, you'll see this big flat cable in there that uh, could very well be the bus and what you have there there are actually three kinds of bus there's a an address bus a data bus and a control bus uh, and I've just sort of drawn a little uh, diagram here this that roughly shows that uh, an address bus says what address in memory that you're trying to read from or write to the data bus is the data that's actually going to memory or coming to memory or to some other peripheral. Uh, and then the control bus contains things like the clock signal and, and says, okay, you're the memory chip that I'm talking to. Uh, it's used for other things as well. But it says either you're the chip I'm talking to or you're the, uh, the input-output device I'm talking to or things like that. And then the address is the address inside the chip that uh, you're trying to, uh, to uh, address. Now, keep in mind, these are all bits. Uh, all this information is bit information. Well, I've run out of time uh, for these videos. I'm trying to keep them as short as I can. Um, but um, that, that sometimes conflicts with the issue of trying to explain th everything that really needs to be explained. So I'm going to call an end to this video, and we'll continue with video 10 uh, on the same topic. Thank you.